If you have your Bibles today, I'd like to turn your attention to the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Amen. It's so good to see everyone today. Willow, it's good to see you. Yep. yep. Yeah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 53, and I'll just read one verse in your hearing today. Bible says that he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, and we hid it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. And I want to talk to you today about rejection. Lord Jesus, we thank you today for your word. And it is my prayer today that your holy anointing today would rest upon your servant as we deliver the word of God. Give us the ears to hear your word and a heart to receive it. We'll be sure to thank you and praise you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Has anyone ever been rejected before? Rejection's a hard thing, isn't it? It is a hard thing. Do you remember the earliest moment of your life when you were rejected? Yeah. Uh-oh, I got a good one. Amen corner over here. Amen. I, I'll never forget one of the earliest times, and I'm sure it was something probably even before then, but um, I remember I was around 13 years old, and uh, there was a girl that, I had liked and we had stayed in communication with, uh, you know, because we had traveled around and, um, and you know, we were, we were good friends, but, um, uh, you know, we, we were raised in a home missions church and we didn't have a lot of friends in church. So uh, stayed in communication and, and uh, you know, back in the day when we had, anybody remember landlines? I mean, like corded phones? And answer machines, you know, and then it was high tech when we went to cordless phones. I mean, it was known in, in our household that if we wanted to make any phone calls, it had to be made and done before dad got home. Because when dad got home, he was going to be checking all of the answer, the answer machine, catching up on calls and then making phone calls back himself. But anyway, the, I had... Uh, uh, had, had an interest in, in just communication. She lived in Ohio. I lived in Florida. And so, you know, we're, we're young, but we, had, we were communicating. I, I remember the evening, um, as I remember, it was probably about 7, 7.30 at night. The reason why I know it was dark outside. And I know where the office was or where my dad's desk was in the back Florida room as he was there. And he answered the phone and there... Uh, uh, she was on the line to be able to talk uh, to me. And um, in communication, you know, the first thing I want to do is go and hide in the room kind of thing. But she let me know right then and there because I had not received the Holy Ghost yet that she was going to have to cut off all communication with me and that we were no longer able to be able to talk uh, as, as friends any longer because she was not going to be unequally yoked. It's kind of comical at 13 years old. But that was uh, a complete heartbreak. And uh, nevertheless, my boys had asked me later on because it was that summer that I did receive the Holy Ghost. And the boys asked me, Dad, did you receive it because of her? And I said, absolutely not. I was ready to be saved myself. Uh, but I'll never forget that later on she tried to call me back. And uh, once she found out that I had received the Holy Ghost, and she wanted to talk again, and I shut it down then because my heart was already broken. And, uh, you know, you break a little 13-year-old's heart, you're done. And so that's my, that's my, my story of being uh, first remembering fully of, of rejection, but isn't it weird that when you are rejected uh, that you remember the details around everything? Uh, I, everything about the phone, I remember. I remember everything about that evening. I remember, uh, you know, the, how, how dark it was outside. There, everything about that moment, um, I, I remember. 
about it. We all today have, have felt some type of a rejection, whether it was something that happened on a, on a date or that you have uh, been rejected or fired from a job. And, and, and even that, it, it hurts deeply to be, to be rejected when you have been let go from, from somewhere. It is also awful in some people in many relationships uh, that they can be married for many years, and yet there is something that even though they live together underneath the same household, and yet they can even share the same bed, that 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 uh, spouse can look at them and not and not really have deep feelings for them, but rather have some type of rejection or resentment to them. I want you to know today that that rejection is a hard thing. It is hard, and when we are, have been rejected, it is easy for us to take that on through life. We can carry that. It becomes another weight in our bag that we carry throughout this life. And I want to talk to you today about moving past that rejection, moving past that direction. Because a lot of times we can take rejection, and we always will retaliate on those that are close and near and dear to us. It's often been said that hurt people hurt people. And so we want to look to the Word of God today, as I've already read in our text, that Jesus Christ was despised and rejected of men. And so with that being understood today, that you and I are not the only ones that have been rejected, but Jesus Christ understands what it's like to be rejected of men and to be rejected by family. If you'd like to follow along with me today in the book of St. Mark chapter 3, I'm going to be reading a few things in your, in your hearing. The Bible lets us know in, in Mark chapter 3 that Jesus Christ had, he had, um, he, he had quite the following going on. He had uh, definitely had, uh, people that were following him due to the miracles that were that were happening, and that the Bible even lets us know that that he had he had not only the the following, but he was about ready to pull out his very own twelve that were going to be chosen uh, by by him. The Bible says in in Saint Mark chapter three verse thirteen that he went up on the mountain. And summon those whom he wanted, uh, himself wanted, and they came to him. The Bible says that he appointed twelve so that they would be with him and that he could send them out to preach and to have authority over, over the demons. The Bible lets us know that Jesus had. Not only had the crowd that was around him, but at this particular scene that he had taken, the Bible says 12, he had summoned them to come with them as they, he was separating himself from the crowd to be able to go to the mountain. And there the Bible says that he had appointed 12. And I want you to know, notice the wording today. So that they would be with him. There's something that's great that when you're with him. It is often said that there were hundreds, if not thousands of people that would follow Jesus Christ from, from place to place. But Jesus pointed out 12 disciples, 12, we could call them apostles, that he was going to train, give them authorization as a representation of him. He had chosen 12. It's been corresponded many times that he chose 12 because it correlated with the 12 tribes uh, of Israel. He was showing the continuity between the old religious system and the new one based on Jesus' message. And so many people had followed Jesus. Many people followed him, but Jesus was taking 12 to be able to receive this intense training with him. Many people followed alongside, but he was going to say, I want you to be with me. There is one thing today to be around somebody. It's another thing to be with them. 
It's one thing to be around people. When you're around people, they're already dressed up. To be around people, they're already on their best behavior. To be around people, they're, they're going to put their best foot forward. But when you are with someone, it is totally, totally opposite. I, I, you know, when, when I was dating my wife and she was around me, uh, she saw me at my best. She saw everything. I did, uh, you know, there was no bodily functions that, that slipped out when I was, with, when I was around her. I was I was dressed up. I, I, I you know I, I yeah I, I loved my my shoes back then. I had stylish shoes and I was all into that because that's all I had, that's what I knew at that moment. And amazing how everything changes. I still like style, but other things become more important than black and white shoes and and all the other fun things that we did back then. But you know, when you're around somebody, you, you put your, your best foot forward. But 22 years ago when we got married and now she is with me, it's totally different. Because now she's with me, she sees the hair that's messed up. That's not always just, you know, gelled up. And, and now that she's with me, there is some breath that smells. And now that she's with me, you know, there can be a burp that may slip out somewhere, you know, especially the older we get. Oh, don't act like you're all prim and proper because I know today that things begin to slip out the older, the older that we get. The point is today that, 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 uh, I'm talking about slipping out, not being a gross man either and just wanting to be gross about it. I'm talking about when natural things just kind of happen in life. The point of the matter is today is that to be around somebody is totally different than being with them. You got my, you, you got my point today? Did I suck you in? Yes, I did. I'm pretty good at that, right? Got you right where I wanted you. To be around them. They're, 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 and so with Jesus, people were around. Can I tell you today, there are a lot of people that are around church. They, they, they come to church because of the music. They come to church because they can be entertained by, by the preaching, but they're never with Jesus. I, I, I'll, I will have to go back and say it again today. That Christianity is being known about being around Him, but not being with with him you can be around something and they come around church and they see you know they see the the production of it but to be able to be with you see the other side of it you see the other side of it many people today that's all they want they want to be around jesus they want to be tickled by the preaching they they, they want to be entertained by the music and and be elevated by those things but it, that's just being around him those are crowds and crowds come and crowds go but to be with jesus amen is to follow him through the thick and the thin to be able to be with Him is that you're going to be with Him through the highs and the lows. Through the disappointments of life is to be able to be with Him. To be able to be with Him is that there is a prayer life that is still developed. There is still time of reading and understanding His Word. Amen. And can I challenge all of us today that may hear this message that we need to fall in love with Jesus again. We need to fall in love with prayer again. We need to fall in love with His Word again. We need to be able to be that which is said that we are with Jesus. And so when Jesus is pulled away from the crowd in this story, the Bible says He pulled out 12 men and that they are going to be able to be with Jesus. I want you to know today that the 12 that He pulled out to be companions with them were not pulled out because of their faith. The 12 disciples, we can look at their faith and their faith was like the stock market. It was up one day and down the next. It would go way up one day and it could crash the very next. Jesus did not pull them out because of their faith. I'm here today to tell you that Jesus didn't even pull out the disciples and pick out the 12 simply because of their talents. 
He did not even pull them out because of, of how gifted that they were. He didn't pull them out because of the way that man would pull somebody out to be able to pull leadership in close to Him. But rather that Jesus looked at, at their ability, Jesus looked at something that went uh, past what man looks at and he saw characteristics within them that there was some obedience that they had to be able to follow him and that's what Jesus was attracted to he said I, I really don't care about how talented that you are I don't really care how gifted that you are I don't really care how great you may look but if there's some obedience that is there then I can take your obedience and I can add the giftedness that you will need to be able to do, perform the work that I want you to perform. And so it is that Jesus pulls out these 12. And the Bible goes on to say in verse 20 that he came, he came home and that there was a crowd that was gathered again to such an, an extent that they could not even have a meal. Jesus' popularity had grown so, so heavily that, that, that Jesus, his Instagram had blown up. Jesus' YouTube channel hit over a million subscribers. Yeah, I mean, he was, he was popular. Everywhere that he went, there ended up being a crowd. It was so crowded, the Bible even dictates to us that in the home that he was going to, he could not even eat a meal. The Bible says that when his own people, other translation says when his, his family, when his own people heard this, they went out to take custody of him and they were saying that he has lost his own senses. Oh, I don't want to get bogged down in that today, but can I tell you, sometimes family's the worst. You try to tell them about a pay raise. Tell them about something to happen and they got to criticize and, you know, be critical or whatever it may be. Sometimes family members can be the worst. You know, you have a vision about something. You have a dream about something. And you, you go to talk about that dream. And the first thing the family wants to do is give their two cents of why it's not going to work. I point that out because Jesus, the Bible lets us know, Jesus couldn't even do anything with his own family. Couldn't do it. And so here we, we, we see him. Uh, you know, he, he, he's there. And, and now the family members, they're, they're coming in to, to be able to pull Jesus away because they said, Jesus, you got some, you got some mental issues going on. And he get, got it, we got to pull you out of this crowd. You're not as great as you think you are. I don't know who you think you are, but I remember when you were just 11 years old and you slipped up and you said a cuss word, Jesus. Now, I don't think that he did that, but you get my point? Now, well, I, I remember when you failed. I remember when you faltered. I, I, I remember when you slipped up. I, I remember when you had that attitude. And so it was difficult for Jesus to be able to, to minister to him. And so Jesus has though his, the men that are with him, the men that he is there to, 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 to train. As I said, that being with Jesus is different than being around Jesus. You see, today if you're going to be with Jesus... There will always be a price to pay. Now I just told you about family. Wants nothing to do with you, you know, and can be critical, right? Think about those of you today that, that became saved. Maybe you're the first one in your family that decided to turn your heart and life to Jesus Christ. I guarantee you today, beyond the shadow of a doubt, if I would interview you, each and every one of you, you would talk about the difficulties that your family put you through when you decided to turn your life to Jesus Christ. Because there's something that happens there. That all of a sudden when you choose to be able to be with Him, there will always be a price, and that is you will feel rejected. The closer you get to Jesus, 
the higher the price that will be paid. You see, 11 of the 12 disciples, they, they gave their life to following Jesus. One of them, we know, did the very opposite and betrayed him. But these men, they, they dealt with rejection and that there was a price that was paid for all of them to be able to follow Jesus. So the question is today, how do, how, how do you respond to rejection? How do you respond to persecution? How are you going to respond to it? How does the world respond to rejection? And then how does Jesus not respond to rejection? Can I tell you today that Jesus did not retreat when he experienced rejection? Our first thing is that when we're rejected, we want to run and hide. We want to build a wall. Build that wall up really high. And I mean really thick. So that we don't have to deal with that rejection again. When we deal with rejection, we want to isolate ourselves. Pull ourselves back. We even get to the point we want to shut other people out. Close the door. Lock it and throw the key away. We are here to protect ourselves because of re rejection. And so the problem is, some people, they can deal with it and they're afraid to be able to ask somebody else out again because of rejection. They, they, they can feel so rejected by friends that, that they no longer want to make friends any longer because of they don't want to deal with rejection. Some people get to the point that, that they're scared about applying for a job because of the fear of rejection. Some people have been rejected when they try to talk about their experience of walking with Jesus. And so the outcome of that is that they are afraid to talk to others about Jesus. But I want you to know today that in the Word of God, that Jesus Christ never, He never retreated and He never pulled back when He experienced rejection. And I want to tell you today, if you've experienced it, you need to tear that wall down. You need to get to a point that you, you don't fear it because I, I want you to know today that every experience that you've had in life has made you to who you are today. Every experience. Number two is simply this, that Jesus did not retaliate when he experienced rejection. Now, I don't know about you today, but I had a little bit of retaliation when she decided because that I had spoken tongues and I received the Holy Ghost that now it was okay to talk to me. But you hurt me once, you're not going to hurt me again. And so, nope, I was not going to allow and it was my way to retaliate against someone by me now having the upper hand to be able to reject them. It's so easy to push others away. It's so easy to get angry. But I want you to note today that if we're going to be like Jesus Christ, Jesus did not retaliate when he experienced rejection. So many times in this life, I personally have felt like a doormat. I personally have felt like people have unloaded all their junk. We'll keep it G-rated. We won't see, say the C word that many of us would like to say. But people have unloaded all their stuff and to the point that you can feel like you're a doormat. A doormat is that which you wipe your feet on before you enter into the door. Anybody felt like that before? They just unload everything on you. They, 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 they pour out all their problems because they, they, they need your voice. And they get into your head. And many times, those people, they can unload everything, wipe all their junk all over you, clean their feet off, and just move on with life. The problem is that they may have walked out on your life, but then they are still running laps in your head. They pull all their junk out in you. 
Oh yeah, it happens all the time. Unload everything. Wipe their feet clean and then guess what? They move on. The problem is that they've already forgot about you, but you have not forgotten about it. They move on, but they are still running laps in your mind. I want you to note today in Mark chapter 3 verse 32, the Bible says that the crowd was sitting around him and they told him that your mother and brother, brothers, they're outside looking for you. Hey, Jesus, your family, the ones that, you know, earlier were going to rescue you to get you out because you're mad, you're crazy, you got some, you know, crazy thoughts going up there, Jesus. Uh, hey, your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. And Jesus' response to them was, Who are my mothers and brothers? And then he looked at those that were seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and brothers. And verse 35 says that whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. I want you to note today that Jesus made it very clear that immediate family members can betray you. Immediate families may not always have your best interest, but here in the church, He gives you mothers and brothers and sisters. He gives you everything that your family members may have rejected you and pushed you away and may have disowned you. But Jesus said, I don't know who they are, but here are my mothers, brothers, and sisters. Look at the circle that is around me. Wow. I guarantee you today, if some of you have made that statement to your family members, they would tell you, you're really crazy. But Jesus said, my family... They don't have the same vision. They don't know what I'm about. Family thinks I'm crazy. But I want you to know, here, uh, here are my brothers, sisters, and mothers. I want you to note today that Jesus responds to rejection with an invitation. He doesn't, he just say. Like, yeah, Jesus Christ, I'm trying to be more like him, ladies and gentlemen. Because every time I read the word of God, it definitely is compelling and convicting into our lives. Jesus, so many times, he had to feel like a doormat. But instead of feeling that way, which our feelings can get the best of us, can I tell you that Jesus flipped that doormat around and made it a welcome mat. He made it a welcome mat. Jesus Christ today, you, you may have come down hard on Him in your past today, but you may have rejected Him at one point in time in your life, but Jesus always rolls out the welcome mat. He, he, he looks and sees the people that are around Him and He invited them. He said, this is my brothers and sisters. This is my, my mother. These that are around me. So even though that Jesus experienced rejection, He turns it around and He offers an invitation. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, that He came to, to that which was His own. But His own did not receive Him. Yet to all who did receive Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become the children of God. You're talking about rejection. He came to His own, but His own had nothing to do with Him. Not only did His family give Him that issue, but the Israelites, He came for them. and They had nothing to do with them. I'm thankful for that. I am beyond thankful because of their rejection of Jesus Christ opened up an opportunity for you and I to become sons and daughters of God. 
I'm here today to tell you that when one door closes of rejection, another door will always open. And so Jesus, he, he said, you know, I may feel like a doormat right now and be rejected. But he turned around and rolled out the welcome mat. And I can I tell you today that even when you and I feel like we are a doormat, can I tell you that you are called to be able to roll out the welcome mat? Jesus didn't retaliate, but rather that Jesus responded with love. No retaliation from him, but rather his response was love. Jesus didn't retreat. Jesus refused to give up. He refused. Jesus didn't even allow his own rejection to turn in his resignation. I quit. I'm out of here. I resign. Rejection can be the very direction for where God wants us to work. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says it like this. Let us not be weary in doing good. For at the proper time. We want to rush time. But the Bible says at the proper time. We will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So Jesus didn't give up. He didn't retreat. He didn't retaliate. He just kept going. Because his response to everything is a four-letter word that we need to get into our hearts and lives. And that four-letter word is love. Love will drive you to do some crazy things. In Mark 3, 34, he said, when he looked at those that were seated in a circle around him, people rejected him, family members thought he was crazy, rejected him, but when he looked at those that were around him, they were seated around him. Many of us today, we're looking all for the wrong things when many times the answer Everything we need is right there in front of us. Jesus focused on those who were there and not those who weren't. Jesus focused on what was there, what was present, and not those who were missing. And so my question to you, to you today is simply this. What are you looking at? Are you looking at all the hurt and the rejection and the pain and the suffering? Or are you looking at how those things can change your character and make you into a better person and a better, better follower of Jesus Christ? Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says it like this. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus Christ is going to be executed. And he can go to that with joy. Because he's not looking at what's there. But he's looking at what wasn't there. And that was you and I. He can go to the cross and he can endure all of that. Why? Because of you. He saw you. He knew you before you were ever born. He knows you. You are loved by Him. And so for the joy that was set before Him, He endured the cross. So it is today, I hope that I can be an inspiration to you this morning as I tell you this. Many people may have rejected you. You may have a lot of hurt a lot of wounds that are in your life because of rejection. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ, He understands it. He knows. He knows the pain and the suffering of rejection. He knows what that's like. But Jesus never retaliated, but showed love. Jesus never ran away from it, but He showed love. 
And I want you to know today that is the key to everything in your life is that big word called love. It is my prayer today that Jesus will help us. Help us to love more. Even when we're hurt. To love. To love. I go back to my text today. In Isaiah chapter 53. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow. And acquainted with grief. And we hid it. Were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did not esteem, but yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was rejected. He faced all that. But it, the story doesn't end there. Verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. The Bible says that he was wounded. A wound is an outward breaking of skin. A transgression is the very sin that was brought against the law of rebellion. Yet the Bible tells us that he was taking care of all of that. The external things of uh, uh, cuts of being wounded. And yet he was not only wounded on the outside. But he was wounded on the inside. I, I heard the study that said that when you are rejected. The pain of rejection is the same pain of physical wounds. You physically being injured, what that, that portion of the brain that is affected when, when you are injured physically is the same part of the brain that is affected when you, are, when you have felt rejection. And yet, Jesus Christ did all of that. He was bruised. That was that, that inward iniquities and wickedness. He, he took care of all of that for you and I on the cross of Calv Calvary. And the Bible says that the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. We're healed. Rejected? You can be healed. There's healing today. And your healing is found in Jesus Christ.